Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelov, and this is Speedplay Conclave number 24. We left off needing to gather piety, and the best way to do that is to attack the Muslims. So we go ahead and declare a holy war, build up our armies, and get ready to just send them all over. We still have a slight problem just getting enough transports for a lot of our forces. Other areas have far too many, so it kind of balances out. And ultimately, we are still fighting the massive globe-spanning defensive pact, Although it doesn't really matter since we're able to bring so many forces to bear so quickly. We go ahead and just assault their holdings and move down along the northern coast of Africa. It's going fairly well and we're attacking in several places at once just because we have so many armies that we are able to do so. They manage to offer us peace before we have to siege the rest. We go ahead and start granting it over to just various new vassals, including a family member because we're going to just try to keep giving territories to family as long as we're able to. And we have enough landed family members at this point that we're able to do it uh, fairly consistently. We will still more likely than not have a lot of areas we give to non-family members. However, as long as each duchy or each kingdom has at least one or two family members in it, we can just keep granting titles to them and really just ensure our family's success in any elections for the Byzantine throne. We also go ahead and make a du jour war over this one county, simply because it's there and it's a relatively straightforward thing. And this is really going to be just mainly us campaigning. We were going to go against the Mirzids, but uh, we have a truce with them, so we're not going to do that yet. We do attack for uh, Tangier, though, so we just load up troops again. Uh, that's the one slightly tedious thing, is we do have to just keep loading and uh, raising and unloading and re-raising troops over and over again. There's also just a little bit of tedium with uh, granting vice royalties, although it's a good sort of tedium. It's the tedium that you kind of strive to get to because it means we are just going to dominate the empire for quite some time. We do go ahead and start offloading these troops. They're doing a fairly decent job of it, and it's probably just going to be similar to the last war where we just kind of rush in, win it fairly quickly. Um, there we go, we did win it. We go ahead and just start granting all these titles. Same thing over and over again. We're probably going to have uh, a bit more of that in the future just to build up piety, as we still need to attack Catholic areas to reconquer all the areas that had once been in the Roman Empire, which is the goal at this point, and it is nice to just build up as much as possible. I did also raise mercenaries, that way we don't have to just call on our vassals all the time which will hopefully increase our relations with them as we won't have the raised levy penalty, and it looks as though it makes our wars a little bit quicker. Now we are able to get peace with them, which is very nice. We go ahead and do that. That had once been a family member in charge of that area. We do instead just grant it to a religious figure since it's just out of the way and not really worth anything else. Anti-Atlas is an independent duchy. We go ahead and just attack that uh, simply because it's there and we have troops nearby. We do raise some of our vassal levies just to be safe and to avoid spending all of these mercenaries, although we do have a decent amount of gold at this point, so it's not as though it really matters too much. Now, uh, once we win this war, though, we will be heavily limited by the people we are uh, at truce with, and it would cost us quite a lot of prestige and lower relations with Muslims if we were to just attack anyway. We may end up doing that just because well, it's really the last area we need to get all of the Roman territories back, and it is kind of scattered and just disparate. We do go ahead and declare war on the people formerly in control of Jerusalem as our truce ended with them, bring some of our vassal forces over, and just rush into them. Now, the war is just for Alexandria. We managed to siege all of their holdings, yet they are not willing to make peace. We also attempt to uh, mess around with the holy orders, which are in charge of some of the lands in uh, Jerusalem, as well as the Antioch area. Uh, since they aren't willing to make peace just yet, we're going to just charge down to their other holding, which is just in the south of Jerusalem. It looks like there's a lot of enemy armies around, but none too much that we're really concerned. And we go ahead and just enforce peace on them, which works fairly straightforwardly, and uh, just manages to win us that war. We could go into other wars against various Muslim groups, although we wouldn't really gain anything from it at this point. I do try to mess around with the holy orders again. Uh, a theory I'm having is uh, I'm trying to find a way to get them to accept vassalization. 
Now, uh, one thing we could do is grant them control over a territory that we have a du jour claim on. For instance, we control the du jour duchy of Antioch. However, they won't accept vassalization from us just granting it to them. Luckily, we do have a vassal pope, so we can go ahead and just claim it back and attack. Now, uh, further, unfortunately, that wasn't even the holy order that controls the one territory in Antioch that we need to get full control over the territory. However, we have proven that we're able to do that, so we go ahead and grant it to the right one this time, claim it once more, and they once again will not accept vassalization. We also plot to kill one of our vassals, just go ahead and attack, and we've already attacked the holding, so they have very low garrisons, we just charge again. This time we get it, now we have full control over the Duchy of Antioch. We need to do that again in Jerusalem, however, we've given that to our heir, so we can't just grant the titles and then attack, we'll probably have to kick out that holy order, which will lose us a thousand piety. So I'm not really looking forward to doing that right now. Uh, there's a new pope as the last one died. We go ahead and just load our forces up. It's probably around time we should attack Germany. We can't actually get claims on all their lands though because they've launched an anti-pope. And we have to uh, reshuffle the vice royalty of Andalusia seeing as the last Viceroy died, and now we just have to shuffle everything around again. So we're going to just go ahead and look for the right candidate. We do find a family member, so we grant it to him. He's a bit younger than us, which is a little worrying, as that might be a problem for our heir when he succeeds us. At any rate, we go ahead and declare war into Germany. The goal is to depose their anti-pope. We also look and... Uh, we can't declare war on the Muslims right now, so this is really the best thing for us to do. We declare this war and send our forces in. We're probably going to raise up a considerable amount of our vassals' levies just to be on the safe side. Although, if we can get away without it, that would be great. We also, once again, have to reshuffle the vice royalties around. There appears to be a bit of an issue with the Greeks having expanded more than I would like. And ultimately, though, they haven't been that powerful, the uh, viceroys here. So we grant it to Wallachia. And now we just have one more powerful viceroy in the area. Meanwhile, our forces are pressing into Germany without really any sign of the enemy, and it looks as though we'll be able to just keep driving forward. We get additional forces nearby. We'll just drive them all up, meet them all together, and hopefully depose this anti-pope with relative ease. Now there is a battle being fought that we managed to reinforce, and we'll win that fairly quickly, we can only hope. It looks as though the war is going very, very easily, which really bodes well for when we eventually claim it and attack. Until then, though, we're just going to keep attacking their holdings and hoping for the best. We will probably have a truce to deal with. We managed to go ahead and accept that. They're now in the same fold as us. We also inherited an Anatolian revolt, which is a little tedious. I'll try to just white piece out of that, as we don't really need to uh, take advantage of our vassals' disloyalty in order to seize power from them, since we already have most of the power. We also go ahead and begin claiming all of the regions in Germany, just all of the duchies. Uh, I would generally try to only take what was in the Roman Empire, however, then they would still have the Kingdom of Germany, and we would have to fight tons of wars against him in order to take each and every individual county. I don't really want to do that, so we'll probably take all of Germany as well. That way we can usurp the kingdom and then just fight each individual county independently. Meanwhile, we're winning the war against that rebellion with very little troops, just the ones from the area around. They won't accept a white peace yet, which is a little annoying, although it looks as though they finally will now. And the reason we didn't press for anything more is we're just going to give the whole region to our viceroy in Armenia. Now it's his problem, and I'm confident he'll be able to hold it all together. We also declare war against Germany. We're very lucky that the old king died, so we don't even have a truce anymore. We raise up our forces from our various now enlarged viceroyalty kingdoms and just unite as many of our forces as we can and move up. We still have a decent force nearby, so we're just going to attack with them like we did previously. We do charge in, and unfortunately they managed to get more forces there than I had considered, and it looks as though they just win that battle out loud which I was not anticipating based on the weakness they displayed in the last war. It looks as though now that they're not fighting for an anti-pope, but actually to hold all of their lands together, they're a little bit more concerned about putting up a good fight. We managed to just keep assaulting their holdings, 
It looks as though they're going to have their army split the last moment. Unfortunately, I uh, misjudged that. Hopefully we will still win the battle though, although it is not really looking in our favor. We are not actually going to win this whatsoever. Our forces are pulling back. Now, uh, one of the reasons I fought those battles is because I thought that 7,000 stack of our retinue cavalry was in one of the armies we had already taken. It was just mercenaries. And uh, now that I'm seeing that 7,000 stack, it's very obvious why we didn't win. That being said, we raise up our, vi our uh, vassal armies and start pulling them forward. Luckily, the enemy has managed to split their army up, confident in their victory, so we're able to just roll through. This is also exactly the thing that I was hoping to avoid, where enemy armies are able to unify and start being a problem since we are not just fighting Germany, but also the rest of the world around them. Now, uh, luckily, we have the amazing staying power that Rome used to be famous for, which allows us to lose a few major, major battles and still roll back another large army and start pressing through. And now that we have the retinue cavalry making their advances, we're just blowing through their countryside. We are taking over the area their king is at, and we win the war, which is just fantastic news. The whole terrain looks a little terrible. We go ahead and uh, just get ready to start passing off the various territories to people of our religion and our culture. The main goal is to get a few family members in charge, but more than that, to just ensure that people of our religion and our culture are in the most powerful spots. So we do that for a while. That's really just the end of the uh, episode. We speed through it just to uh, avoid seeing all that. And here we go. We have almost 20,000 score ourselves. We have pressed forward. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day.